中国贵宾，亲爱的新朋友。大家好，我叫魏卡尔，魏国的魏卡片的卡，希尔顿的尔。我在 Rivets 公司上班。This will be a bilingual presentation. My name is Carl Weaver. I'm a wireless market and mobile device specialist.、Um, I would like to talk first. The first part of my presentation will be about our technology, and then I'll talk about things that you have not heard of before, you will not hear of for quite some time. I'm here to give you a preview. Next, and my presentation is called Private Keys. Can you go back、uh, one second? <coughs> Private keys need policy protection and permissions on blockchain smartphones. I'm sure that very few of you have ever actually seen a blockchain smartphone. You will today. Next. So there's a shift. There's a shift away from network services and multiple users to you, 你自己哈 you the user will now be in control of many services. Why will you be in control of many services? Because you're going to take back. The ability to control your privacy and your security. You can do that now on Apple phones, but you can't do that on Android phones. You will be storing and securing crypto keys, private keys. So the 四钥 you will be doing that on Android smartphones. Actually, that's being done here now in China, and we don't even know it. Actually, the the phone that's doing that right now is Huawei. Let me go further. So you've got an old situation and a new situation. Next. Um. We protect crypto wallet private keys. We are just using private private keys. We are saying protect private private keys. In the uh, uh, is the Android operating system. Uh, system. We are using a secure environment. So we protect crypto wallet private keys. Um, on the Google Play Store and any kind of Play Store in China, as you know, it's bad. Next, um, on the Google Play Store and any kind of Play Store in China, as you know, it's bad. Next, how do we do that? 可可证明的那个网络安全控制。The only way you can protect any kind of technology on a smartphone is by embedding it. And it just so happens all Android smartphones, even Apple, have something called the trusted execution environment, 叫可信执行环境 And this is a security operating system that goes into ARM Trust Zone, which is in the mobile app's processor chip. 就是嵌入你的应用在移动应用处理器芯片内 ，okay? So you might not have ever heard about this, but the technology and the security possibility is all there. Criticize your handset manufacturers if they are not using this security. In China right now, Alipay and WeChat Pay, on every single Chinese smartphone because of Renmin Inhang and Inglian, how to yell show the demand is that Alipay and WeChat Pay must their their mobile wallets must be protected on all Android smartphones inside China. Did anybody know that? Okay, it's okay.、Um, your keys are going to basically be in your control, and you will control them, and you will manage them. Next, how do you do that? 可信执行环境 So this is called the trusted execution environment, which is、um, uh, developed by a company called Trustonic, which is a joint venture between Arm and Jumalto, and、uh, those are the two top security companies for embedded software into hardware on the planet.、Um, Arm makes 98 percent of all the mobile apps. Uh, IP in the world that goes on smartphones, tablets, even smart TVs.、Um, they have partnered with Trustonic,、uh, but they actually have their own security、um, feature in their chips. It's called Arm Trust Zone. Okay, you can do more research.、Um, what we do is we provide policies and hash in this. 放火枪的环境 in this TE vault. It's like a security vault in your handset, and you didn't know you had it. Well, now you do, and you can demand your handset manufacturers to give you security for your mobile payment and other key 数位资产啊，就是资呃数位资产啊啊。Next, kind of difficult to do in two languages, but I'm trying. So provable controls embedded on the chain. So everybody says everybody who knows anything about the blockchain just says, "Oh, the blockchain is so secure. It has Xiaomi. It has cryptography." Yes, it does, but not the edge devices accessing the blockchain. They don't have the proper security. So your smartphone, your tablet, even your BG Bin, even your your PC, you're trying to access the blockchain. There's no security right now. So if you're downloading private keys on your smartphone or your tablet or your PC, you are in big trouble because hackers are just salivating to waiting to steal the private keys. And you know when you create、um, crypt, when you store Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you have a、uh, a pair of public and private keys. The publicly you give out 
as an address. The private key is your security. If people steal those private keys, you're in trouble. You'll never see it again. Next. So this is how we manage it, with policies inside a security vault with inside the chip, and we can protect the smartphone from hackers accessing these, um, accessing these phones to steal these private keys. It isn't just private keys, it's any digital asset with inside the smartphone needs to be protected. Uh, DRM is another way to protect uh, using the TE, but most people now don't care about protecting IP for, uh, for digital rights management and, and video content in China, video content in China, because all the Chinese streaming video providers here are paying Hollywood for the videos. So they're not worried about inf uh, inf infringement, and also you don't see DVDs, DVDs anymore. Anything is, everything is streaming video, just ask your children. They're all using, they're all streaming right now. Nobody's really watching, you know, putting in a CD to watch videos. Next, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. So this is very cool, this is very important. So in the chip of every single mobile apps processor chip, there's something called ARM Trust Zone. Within inside that chip is embedded an operating system. Yeah, it's an operating system for the chip. It's called Kexing Zhixing Huanjing, and this is called the Trust and Execution Environment, or the TEE. Within inside there, we provide the rules to protect the keys. I think it's that simple. But we're doing something also very cool and very different. Anybody? Any Europeans here? I'm guessing we have a few. Have you ever heard of Telefonica? Yeah. 10th largest operator on the planet. Where are you working with Telefonica for the SIM card? The SDK for the SIM card comes from Jamalto, but we're, uh, and so we work with Jamalto to get to Telefonica's SIM card, and we're protecting and splitting those crypto keys between the trusted ex execution environment in the chip and the SIM card, which is a removal. Why is that important? Because you've got two different business models. This is for manufacturers, smartphone manufacturers, uh, chipset manufacturers. So, and third party developers here, you get to use our tools to develop and secure apps. This is only operators. Very difficult to work with operators for a handset maker. Just ask, we'll ask many of them. Next. So, Fen Shan, the Nega Wang Luo Anquan. There are standards. There's the blockchain, there's decentralized apps, there's smart controls, smart contracts, and there's decentralization. Uh, but that's not what's gonna happen in China because of China's all about control, as we probably all know, right? Um, but right now, what you have is payment identity. This is very important, Shenfen, and information assurance. Actually, the Chinese government is very concerned about security on these smartphones, and that's why they demand that Huawei and every single Chinese smartphone vendor protect Alipay and WeChat Pay. In the back end, it's still China Union Pay servers. So moving security and policy beyond the edge to the keys. Next. Mobile devices operate chains. I think I, think I probably explained that, but just, just another slide. Fluff, we don't need to see that. Next. Here's a, this is important. So in 2018, when I joined the company I'm with, I'm with now, I did, I investigated. Lenovo actually came out, with, came, out, came out with a blockchain phone. I visited them four times. They wouldn't tell me that the government told them to stop making the phone. I said, what's going on? But then I realized there's capital controls and currency here, number one. Number two, the government doesn't want anybody to touch crypto here. No ICOs, no crypto exchanges, no crypto wallets can be downloaded on the iOS store or the, or the other stores, the, the Google Android type stores, not, an, not Google Android. Google Android is not allowed in this country. Anyway, um, so they came out with a phone, they were told to stop it. So all these phones that you see here from HTC, which is a Taiwanese company, CERN Labs, Israeli, Hyundai, which is kind of hybrid company out of Singapore, and Sanxing, right, Samsung. Those are all produced and designed outside China so they can play with crypto. Um, and uh, those phones are available. The one you can probably buy right now is Samsung. Now, September, this new company, Huobi, is a crypto exchange. They've come out with a, uh, they're working with another, more, more of a Shanghai, com Shanghai D company in Shenzhen to make a blockchain smartphone, but only for export. Chinese government is very sensitive about cryptocurrencies. They don't want anybody touching it, including Alipay and WeChat Pay, which is very, very interesting. It'll lead to what I want to talk about next. Next. Um, so China's, um, you know, Chinese government has been, the, or the Renmin Yinghang or Zhongyang Yinghang have been working on crypto, um, on this cryptocurrency, uh, researching it for five years, okay? Uh, you ask Donald Trump, and he doesn't know what the hell blockchain is, okay? But the Chinese government has been researching this for a very long time. Um, Next. My slides will be made available and there are some uh, PowerPoints there for your reference. 
Now, what happened just a few months ago, Mr. You know the guy who jogs around the guy who jogs around Beijing in the dead of winter with all the pollution, One. Zuckerberg, and he's basically saying, um, uh, "I want China. To, I want to work with China. Please allow Facebook and please allow WhatsApp in China." Hell no! It's never going to happen. What have they done? They really are competing with WeChat Pay, and they've come out with something called Libra, which is a platform based in Switzerland, and Calibra, which is the mobile wallet. Calibra, okay? uh, in my humble opinion, we got a problem here because um, you know, Tencent right now could probably take Libra and throw it off the planet because WeChat Pay is a super app and it's been doing fantastically inside China, but there's a problem. There's a problem because of China's cybersecurity law. As of January 2019, GDPR type requirements, nobody can have a WeChat or Alipay account with a foreign credit card. Uh, and, uh, with a foreign credit card. You must have a local Chinese debit or credit card and you must authenticate with two-factor authentication with a local Chinese SIM card. Any foreigners here live in China? You probably know what I'm talking about. What does that mean? Why are they doing it? In China's aspect, what China wants to do is they want, it's GDPR, they want to control who's accessing these third-party platforms. But in reality, I help to enable all the technology for near-field communications when I worked for Jamalto in China. The Chinese government and the Chinese banks and the Chinese point of sale device vendors have invested millions of dollars in making sure things like this are successful. But you show this to any, anybody, uh, any, any stall in China, they'll say, we don't use that anymore, right? You're laughing. We say, only Wei Xingbao or Jirfu Bao, only Alipay and WeChat Pay, right? And if you live here in China, come on, you know what I'm talking about. It's like this, we don't use this. This, the Chinese government spent, a, the Chinese bank spent a lot of money with this technology, and it's a problem right now because um, if you go into, if you go into a subway and your smartphone has no power, well, how do you use the barcode and WeChat Pay? Huh? You can't. But with near field communications, it has inductive power, so all you have to do is get it near the point of sit, the turnstile in the subway, and it works. Cool, right? All right. Um, next. Now, this is something that I've been watching and formulating. It is my humble opinion that if the government would allow WeChat Pay to add crypto or be involved in this new Chinese sovereign digital currency, which they're going to come out with, they would blow Libra away. But I have no idea if they're going to do that. But if you think about it, 2013 is when WeChat Pay was established. And it has taken over China. I mean, come on. Alipay and WeChat Pay, 80% to 90%. Uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult for the other companies to come back, but they can come back because of this new cybersecurity law. So keep an eye on that. Um, these are some of the chat apps. You, I think you know who most of these are. They're all Asian, uh, except, except uh, Facebook. Next. Uh, this is very important. So China Union Pay has come, with a, come up with a new <coughs> project called Smart Mobile Post. Peer to peer. That's basically taking one smartphone and it, it's acting as a post. We don't need one of these long post machines with all its funky input methods anymore. We just need a smartphone that is capable of accepting um, China Union Pay's smart mobile post technology right here. And by the way, Samsung is part of that project too. Apple is not. Maybe they want to be. So I have two smartphones and I don't need to go through a bank because it's already. Uh, uh, are tested with a bank, it's already certified by China Union Pay. I can take one Huawei smartphone, touch the other one, and transfer money, real money. Renminbi, probably just Renminbi, and this new Chinese currency that's going to come out. That is very cool. It isn't just money, it's the Shenzhen. Did you know you can, you can have your national ID card on a Huawei smartphone, and it will be authenticated, and it's actually all certified by China Union Pay. That is very cool stuff. Anybody know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Um, we have to talk later. Um, so, so, but the thing is, is the trusted execution environment can be used to protect crypto wallets, which are being exported on these all these smartphones. The Chinese are exporting millions of smartphones, but because of this requirement not to touch crypto, all those ex, all those phones being exported cannot be secured, and all the foreigners that do buy Chinese smartphones. They can't protect the crypto wallets, and hackers are salivating, saying, "Wow, job security! I can just, you know, rip everybody off." It is a big problem. We're, I'm not criticizing anybody, but I'm just saying that um, please work on this. Uh, we have the technology to help China and all these Chinese smartphone vendors because we're using the trusted execution environment. Next, 
Um, so I talked a little about Libra and Calibra. This is just a comparison between the two. In my humble opinion, Zuckerberg realized how powerful WeChat Pay was, and then comparing it with his own WhatsApp, and he said, oh, well, the Tian, well, one done, I've lost the ball game. <laughs> Next. You can watch these slides later. This is very key. Has anybody ever seen this program? This is the program I'm talking to you about by China Union Pay. Now, I've been told not to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I feel that possibly they will add a third part at Chinese crypto to be used by these Chinese smartphone vendors and then these five banks. Um, right now, the Chinese government has a two tier strategy the Renmin Inhang or the Zhongyang Inhang. They are going to manage this new crypto or this new digital currency. And then they're going to feed it to the second tier banks. I think they're also going to ask all the handset makers here, especially these guys. You notice Samsung, for some reason, is not, doesn't seem to be there. I don't know why. Samsung's involved in this program. They're going to ask them to push a Chinese digital currency out to the world. Pretty sure. But, I, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I could be wrong. Don't throw me in a Qingdao jail, OK? <laughs> um, but they're using the trusted execution environment. This is something that was put together by UnionPay for all the smartphone vendors to protect all these cool apps. See all the cool apps? All the cool use cases, including your national ID card. Next. OK. So my Chinese colleagues were laughing when I said, panda bucks or dragon dollars. I said, and some guy said, I like dragon dollars. The guy said, I like dragon dollars. The woman said, I like panda bucks. I think there's a feminine and masculine thing going on there. So China's digital RMB is going to be a reality. I'm, I'm so happy that I'm pretty much the first person in the, in the world that's given this type of presentation, and I'm doing it in China. I'm really, really lucky, and I'm, I'm glad that you, and hope you enjoy what you're, going to, what you're seeing here. The key, though, is will they use a stable coin? I'm not sure. One thing I think the problem is, listen, Alipay and WeChat Pay have captured the market, but their technology is old, 40-year-old Japanese barcode technology that is not safe compared to near-field communications, which all Europeans know about because you've been using it for 10, 15 years. In my mind, the Chinese government wants to limit WeChat Pay and Alipay outside the country with this new cybersecurity law. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Next. But then, here it is, the Peeps, People's Bank, Renmin Inhang, are going through commercial banks and then individual businesses. So first, five commercial banks under the auspices of the People's Bank of China, uh, and they'll filter it down. So they have complete control over the digital currency. In America, we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have these 20-year-olds who are pushing this stuff. They have, no, they have no clue about security on smartphones. Zero. Uh, here I am to tell you what's really going on. Um, next. Uh, so this is the final slide. I'm summarizing CBDR, which means um, central bank digital currency. Let's just call it digital currency. Let's not call it cryptocurrency, although it is cryptocurrency. Anything that's being uh, used for payment on a smartphone, it uses cryptography, so it is cryptocurrency. Um, it's held in the wallet, encrypted like cryptocurrency with private keys. We can protect it. Held by users in a decentralized way, but controlled by PBOC. So that's a dichotomy, right? Because... Bitcoin is decentralized and nobody controls it. Not a government, not a company, nobody controls it. But the Chinese government feels the need to control it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I have no opinion, opinion, opinion either way. Our goal is to protect those digital assets. Um, subscribers with clear transmissions paid by tokens held in wallets directly via the central bank system. Makes sense. Dragon dollars, panda bucks. I don't know what they're going to use, but it seems to me they can have, uh, you can have that. I just threw out there that name. Hopefully you can use it. Did, um, this may lead to faster transactions. I think it's also going to help the Belt and Road because there's lots of countries that cannot get access to U.S. dollars. China gets access to U.S. dollars through Hong Kong. That's now in jeopardy. China needs access to Western currency in order to buy oil and other things. They can't use the renminbi to buy lots of things. They need the U.S. dollar. They want to replace the U.S. dollar with a renminbi, a digital version of renminbi. And by the way, every country in the world is going to do the same thing. And I mean, what? Um, what is it? Goldman Sachs is going to do this. Walmart is going to do this. Everybody's going to do it. Because when Apple came out, they let the genie out of the bag. Of course, it's just digital, digital assets virtually digitized on a smartphone. That's what it is. That's what it is. Next. Woo. I think so. Wow. <laughs> if you retained anything, I'd be surprised. But uh, the video was captured. I have some slides. 
please, I have lots of videos on Yoku in Mandarin. I usually present in Mandarin, but I just didn't have the time to go through the Mandarin too much. And then I have lots of videos on YouTube. I really feel that this is a great situation in China with mobile payments. And in America, we are laggards with payment and security. So more power to China to push these standards and push really visionary thinking. I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you all very much.